we're going to look at the interscaling approach to the brachial plexus now. I prefer to use my track back or trace back technique in order to find my interscaling groove. I'm going to place my probe supraclavicularly, get a good visualization of my supraclavicular plexus, and then I'm going to scan my probe cephalat up the neck. There's not much distance um, we can see in moving that probe going from supraclavicular to an interscaling groove. I'm going to pause here and we've got a fantastic view of our interscaling groove um, in our model today. We can see our C5 nerve, nerve root, posterior to that is our C6 nerve root, our C7 nerve root and we can also see our vertebral artery our anterior scalene muscle to the right of the screen, middle scalene to the left of the screen. So this is very much our textbook classic view of the interscalene groove. To perform this block, we can see that we've moved the, the model's pillow, so we have it in a, in a long axis rather than going straight across. This gives us great access with our needle to come in from the posterior lateral point of the probe. Our needle entry point will be here, an in-plane approach and myself, I aim for below the C6 nerve root. That I have found has been the safest place. Now we need a C5 and a C6 for our shoulder block. We could see C7 and invariably C7 is going to get blocked in this individual patient. We don't always see the C7 nerve root close. But when we describe our interscaling groove, a lot of people discuss the traffic light sign. I prefer to discuss peas in a pod. Traffic lights have three signals. And most people, when they look at this block, count down and say C5, C6, C7. And what they're actually visualizing, as you can see in this image, is C6 bifurcating. It actually, in this image, C5 bifurcates, C6 bifurcates, and C7 bifurcates. And we know we would not see 5, 6, 7, C8, or T1 in this area. So be careful with bifurcations within inside our nerve roots. We do not want to pass our needle in between five and six, and likewise, we don't want to pass our needle in between what we believe could be six and seven. This is now um, demonstrated as a low volume block. So 10 to 15 mLs of local anesthetic will be more than sufficient to give you a block. Some pearls of wisdom here are to look out for the dorsal scapular nerve. We should be using nerve stimulator to perform this block. The dorsal scapular nerve travels through the middle scalene muscle. By using the nerve stimulator, if we were to see a posterior scapular twitch, then we are passing near to that dorsal scapular nerve. We can block that nerve, um, but be careful not to transect it. Another top tip is not to try and block above the C5 nerve root. Putting any local anaesthetic above C5 will invariably give local the spread across the anterior scalene muscle and blocking the phrenic nerve which travels across the top of the anterior scalene muscle.